Hi, I'm Holly McLean with Trainly, and here with us today again is Joanne, our CEO and founder of Trainly. And today we wanted to spend some time talking about one of the most important things about a garden railroad or building any railroad is your track and roadbed. Um, I would say that uh, the more time and effort and energy and quality that you put into building your roadbed, the less headaches and maintenance that you'll have going on in the future. And there are a lot of variables, especially when you're uh, gardening and you're outside with your railroad, that uh, wind, temperature, animals, moisture, all that affects your track and roadbed. So the more that you can make that stable, the uh, better off your train's gonna run and you'll have a lot more enjoyment time rather than um, frustration and so forth with maintenance and derailments and things like that. So um, today, matter of fact, um, you said we get a lot of questions sometimes on what type of track to use and um, how to build these. And of course, we welcome those, those questions. We can certainly be a resource to you on um, building your railroad. But um, so I think today, John, it'd be good if we talk about what are the different types of track mm -hmm. and what are the options within that track? How do you build it and, and kind of how do you connect it all together? Absolutely. Um, Holly raises a very good point. The most important thing is, of course, starting with the basics and getting literally on the ground and starting from the ground up when you're going to build your, your layout. Um, on the table is just basically a sample of some of the track and switches which we carry. And we cannot stress enough the importance of when you are starting out to make sure that it is properly drained. Drainage is one of the main issues that a lot of people have in which they literally have spent hours putting down um, a layout that they're so proud of and then they realize that there are so many issues with it, they need to pull it up and literally start from scratch. So anytime anyone contacts us, the first thing that all of us will say, well, what type of preparation did you do? Did you take into account drainage, um, which is paramount? especially if you live in areas where you have frost or there's a lot of rainfall, you really need to pay attention to that. Um, one of the products which literally launched the, uh, this company is our rail bender. And we've sold at least over 5,000 of these. And it is one of the key tools to have when you are going to do your layout because what it does, it simplifies it for you you're able to make any curves that you want or if the next season comes around spring spring is here you want to begin to run your your trains and cars and you realize that it has changed a little bit what we suggest is that you would take this and you literally put it on the track and you move it back and forth as though you're ironing and it will literally make any corrections that's due to warping or if you have decided that you want to alter your your uh, setup in any way. So this is a phenomenal tool. Everyone who has it, they're, they're very pleased with the product. It's, it's pretty heavy, it's almost like six pounds. And I can't speak enough about it, but it's, Holly definitely will. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great tool. Um, bef before we get, get to that, I, I would say, I guess there's, there, three main types of track. You can have a uh, brass track, which is probably the most common. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you can get uh, stainless steel track. Uh, and then something that's very unique to what, what, uh, what you carry is the nickel plated brass. And so I would suggest, I've always said that the brass track is very good for uh, an indoor layout. Uh, for people that are really budget conscious, and it's uh, it's also good for uh, temporary setups like around uh, around Christmas the holidays shows. or yeah. things like that. Uh, the advantages are it's very easy to work with. Uh, you can either buy it in sections and uh, put it, snap it together, slide it together like a traditional train set around the tree. Right or you, we sell this in six foot flex sections right. in which you would use the rail bender to customize that. Um, it's cost effective, it conducts electricity very well. 
Uh, the downside is that there is a lot of maintenance with brass track. That's right. There's um, the cleaning involved. It's the cleaning. Yeah, it, yeah. it oxidizes and gets to a point to where that uh, if you're running either DC or DCC, mm -hmm. uh, you have to clean this track on a regular basis, and especially if it's outside. Absolutely. Um, yes. But if you're running battery power, then brass track is great because you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the oxidation on that. That's true. Um, the next one, next type of track that is really good for outside is the stainless steel track. The stainless steel track does n is really bulletproof. Um, it's, you can, uh, wildlife can walk on it. Uh, you can stand on it. Um, it's, it, it is a bulletproof rail. Uh, the downside with it is that it's the most expensive track out One, there. And there's no conductivity. Yeah, it doesn't conduct as well as brass. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And it is, it is really uh, significantly harder to, to bend yes. than, um, uh, than the brass track. Yes. I so um, what we started out, I, I, you know, a lot of you know that we have a very large lay out several thousand feet of track and we initially started using the stainless steel very happy with a great product but when i was introduced to train lee and the nickel plated brass track that's like the best of both worlds uh number one it's significantly less than stainless steel true um it's not that much more than our brass track right and by 20 percent. it's about 20 yeah. percent um uh, but it is um, very very easy to work with number one that that it's all brass it has the same conductivity mm -hmm. as brass track because it is brass track right it's basically a brass uh, track well brass rails that are put in bats of nickel and therefore you literally have the best of both worlds you have the conductivity if you need it and also the maintenance on it is substantially lowered so it's, it's a product that we really take a lot of pride in and that we're happy to carry because we just find that it's, it's a perfect blend and it looks really, really good. Yeah, like it's a, it has a very prototypical look yes, to it. Yes, it does. Um, and this is one of the, black, the flex tracks. And you can see it is very flexible. easy, very flexible. <laughs> uh, you still use the rail bend, of course, to um, do your right away, but um, you, there's no way you could do this with uh, right with a stainless steel track. True, uh, but one of the things that we like, and speaking of flex track, what we like about this product is the fact that you do not need to make any cuts. Mm -hmm. You want to bend it left, right, make any type of radius that you want. It's very simple. There are no scissors or pliers necessary in which to, to cut any ends to make that happen. So if you change your mind, you have a layout, you want to go ahead and um, change it completely, it's not an issue. You just bend them straight. If you want straight track, just leave it as it is and you're all set. Yeah, we, uh, on our layout, we have, like I said, we had a lot of stainless steel track and we were having... Um, uh, electrical issues on the long runs yeah. and we switched That's typical. a lot of sections of this to this nickel plated brass uh, and it works great. Uh, the other thing is a lot of people say um, you want your track especially outside to float and mm -hmm. because of the expansion contraction of Absolutely. heat. What is really nice is all this stuff is uh, comes out of Germany it's um, it's a definitely a precision made product, uh, the rails and the ties, and they've done an excellent job of having this rail float on the sleepers or the ties. And you can see they just slide very easily. Right. So when you build your layout, this track, uh, these rails uh, expand and contract very easily inside of these ties, and so you yeah. get. A great float and that really helps eliminate the kinks and so forth that's true uh, on our layout that we have outside we're only I'm only attaching this uh, one screw for every six feet for basically one screw every every section and it gives us just enough float but it keeps it stable and guys we have thousands of feet of track we only feed the track in one spot mm -hmm. um, and we were running DCC and it 
feeds the entire track. We, we don't run every 50 feet these jumpers. We've eliminated all that. So this stuff works great. Um, when we're connecting these things, what we do is, is we also have a very special uh, rail clamp that we use. And these are nickel plated brass as well. And so they conduct electricity uh, exceptionally well. And what I really like nice about this design versus the other designs out there, um, you, and matter of fact, a couple of those companies I think have been sold or re right. going out of business yes. or retired, but um, so they're even getting harder to find. But right. these, but we, ours you can find. We, without you can any find issues. those. We got lots yeah. of those. Matter of fact, my son can attest to that because he meticulously counts out <laughs> these every piece by hand and puts Absolutely. them in a little Ziploc bag, Absolutely. thousands of them. Yes. Um, but we, this is the clamps that we use now. The other clamps, and we'll do a little bit more in-depth video on this, but um, these just use a regular, what's so nice is they use this regular screwdriver and you access them from directly above. Absolutely, which I think is another uh, bonus to this type of clamp because you it's very easy to put in very easy to put out whereas the others in the past you had to either go on the side or underneath which is which is pretty daunting it is it's not easy and what I've noticed on those on our layouts is that those loosen up each season mm -hmm. and so we have to go around and and tighten them um, once or twice a year mm -hmm. and the other thing is you have to kind of it's notice three things one is you have to have that special Allen wrench. Yes. And it's never yes. in the same spot where you left it last. So you That's have to true. hunt around here, <laughs> hunt around your toolbox or your workshop to find it. And then you're always accessing it from the side. Right. And if your track is live, you're always shorting it out also. True. Um, so everybody has a, you know dozens of little standard blade screwdrivers. You just pick that up, you can tack it from the directly from the top. And then you just screw it up. And you don't, I've, I've had these out now on our rails, on our rails for uh, a couple of years. We mm -hmm. haven't tightened a single one. Which is really nice. Oh, it it's, cuts down on the maintenance yeah. time. It's the other thing product. on that, you know, when you are trying to um, um, adjust them or retighten them, there's that magic torque that you have to find. Mm -hmm. If you tighten a little bit too much, those, those, uh, those screws will bend and if you don't tighten them enough, then they, they loosen up. So, right. And there's a very small tolerance between those, so I found. Right. These, you go straight down, this they hold amazing. them year after year. It is a fantastic product. It really is. And the other thing is, I noticed a person was comparing. These are a great price also. They are they're less expensive than the other clamps. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just, these... There's lots of little things that you need to do in building your railroad that true. cut down the maintenance. It's not one magic thing that's it's that, a lot that's of little things. Uh, I, I agree. That's very true. And when we, when we wrap up here, I'm just amazed at about all the different variety of types of uh, track sections that you have, that you have here. Um, you have some very special right. this, uh, type turnouts. This turn is our, what we call our custom line. This is a teal switch. As you can see, and it's the closest that you can ever get to having something custom made for you. Because if you take a look at it, you'll see that the frog is literally in, in metal. So there's no plastic. It, it's just, it's just a It's perfect, the real thing, yeah. just, just a small It really version. is. So try to understand that you have quite a, a variety of these crossovers with the different, uh, different angles and also yes. the different levels of... of um, on how they're made and I was noticing that this one here is more of a um, more of our economy line mm -hmm. um, where the frogs are are plastic this works great it's the same coming out of Germany the same German a, crap craftsmanship and so forth um, but it's a little bit more economical right this is this is what I would call more of our right off the shelf um, line where you could just purchase it. it, it works very well, it's not a problem at all. This is what we call the custom line, which, as you can see the difference, You're right. thank you, as you can see the difference with the frogs, it's just the same manufacturer who makes this type of a switch, and you could see the craftsmanship that's involved in here, and it's, it's really another line that we take pride in because 
they do take their time to make them. And it's nice, the, the, the frogs being uh, all metal on those smaller engines, if you don't have all the pickups, uh, the smaller engines can go ahead and get uh, stall or do a little jerk as they go through. Here you have uh, solid metal all the way through so all you get through. really yes. smooth, That's, smooth running. Yes, and this is just um, an example of our brass switch, which from the manufacturer you could still see that they have the metal frog incorporated in it also. Yeah. Um, now I've had on social media and so forth, I've had a few people make comments that oh well the you know how well does the nickel plated hold up to if you're running trains all the time and you can oh, well, be the, the so perfect person to explain can, it. <laughs> we well you we have uh, several commercial uh, clients, yes, museums, and so forth where they're running this. Yes, we Eight do. hours a day, 365 days a year. Also a huge um, arboretum yeah. also carries uh, and our they don't, nickel plated. Yeah, plate. and w we don't have the, no. the nickel plating wearing off. I've had our track out there for several years now, and we just are adding a new division to the Railroad Empire. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you really can't tell the difference between uh, the track that's uh, several years old and the stuff that's brand new, other than the ties have faded uh, just a little bit. But, but that's that's but normal. that's that's normal. The, but the rails hold up great. Yes, um, the one thing which is really nice is you you don't have to scrub this stuff. No. You I literally we recommend you do not. You do not. No, you don't. You don't want to do that. <laughs> just a damp cloth. Yeah. And so, and that's it. So and I have one of those. Uh, I have one of those drywall sanders on the pole, oh, and I have know? a terry cloth. Uh, on the on the base of it, yeah. and we just dampen that, and we literally wipe this off, and, and, and we're we're done. Absolutely. Or we use one of those little electric sweepers, and it works great. Yeah. So so cautionary tale: do not put your track cleaner while it's operating with the wheels on your nickel plated uh, brass. Yeah, that because will you don't need to. It's, no, you don't. This comes right Absolutely out. not. So. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this little segment uh, about the about the track and the rails and so forth. And we encourage you, if you have any questions or any other subjects that you'd like us to talk about or expand upon, uh, drop us a note on email or give us a call at Trainly, and we'd be happy to uh, discuss those. Thank you.